Hello, this is Vivica Williams and you're watching Head to Head. Today we're talking about human rights in Ukraine, more specifically the action plan to implement Ukraine's 2020 National Human Rights Strategy, which was adopted over three years ago. So how successful has it been so far and what remains to be done? To talk more about this, we're joined in the studio today by Serhii Petuhov, Deputy Minister of Justice of Ukraine on European Integration. Hello, Serhii, thank you for being with us today. Good evening. So let's, let's, the human rights strategy, of course, covers a myriad of topics, and uh, it's very hard to be able to, uh, to focus on something specific. I'm sure all of the mm -hmm. parts are quite interesting. But now we know, uh, actually on one part, recently passed were some laws toughening uh, punishment on discrimination. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about what's being done to change sure. and what types of discrimination this is focusing on? Now, um, the, the first thing that was done is the implementation of uh, the current European legislation on non-discrimination, which includes specific concepts of direct and indirect discrimination, victimization, discrimination by association, and also um, attaching the responsibility to different types of uh, discrimination. We've also introduced the concept of positive action or affirmative action, which is the means to redress historical discrimination and, uh, you know, um, give extra protection to the vulnerable groups, whatever they may be. And uh, well, first, let's speak sure. a little bit specifically about this uh, first, the second one you just mm -hmm. mentioned, uh, the positive of uh, protection. Positive action or Positive affirmative action. action. So that means uh, that you can, for example, you can establish the quota for uh, for underrepresented sex in the public service or elected positions. We are discussing um, right now the quota, the, the gender quota uh, in the parliamentary party lists, uh, which is now already there in place, 30% minimum quota for each gender, but there is no mandatory enforcement of this provision. Uh, and there can be other examples of positive action that would, again, as I said, redress the historical discrepancies or discriminations that we, you know, traditionally had in the society. And so what do we say, say, for example, we know a lot of recent cases, is, and it's not just in Ukraine, of discrimination against the Roma mm -hmm. community. Is that something that's being addressed in the positive actions? Uh, well, I mean, the, the Roma communities have a special part in, uh, in the strategy. Uh, they are, um, the Roma as a people, um, are hard, uh, hard to integrate in many societies, and Ukrainian society is not an exception. We've had, unfortunately, recent examples of violence against Roma. And uh, what is important, I think, is that, well, uh, that this uh, instances of violence is, are, are prosecuted, but also that we talk to the people and explain them and uh, inform them that, you know, the Roma people are just people like us mm -hmm. and also make sure that they are integrated, starting from the issuing the birth certificates to the children, but also enrolling them to schools, giving them medical service and uh, giving them opportunity to find jobs. And also, and when we talk about children in, in school, this is definitely an issue as well and leads to the case of bullying. Mm -hmm. And I know there's been some legislation right. also to try to address that issue in schools. We've uh, we've started an, in uh, a campaign throughout the country to counter the bullying. And uh, well, firstly, we inform people what it is, right? I mean, some people just dismiss that as normal uh, things kids do in school, right? So this is not normal. That's first. And secondly, we also tell what to do. I mean, who to address, should the, you know, the child go, you know, the, a student go to a teacher, should they, the parents call the police, how, you know, how they should react in the situation when the actual bullying is happening. But also we are, are uh, involving the, um, the uh, famous people, you know, celebrities, mm -hmm. especially sort of, you know, the younger teenagers who are stars in the, in the local movies. And, and, and TV series who would inform and talk about that, you know, bullying is not cool. I mean, that's not how you should behave. You should not offend someone who is uh, different from you or, right. or weaker than you. And we expect that this, you know, would uh, by itself, you know, get, you know, through to the parents and children, you know, to change their attitudes. 
And uh, let's talk a little bit also about uh, discrimination. We know uh, there have been laws on the books, and it, this is toughening the law. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we, there's an issue with implementation. Mm -hmm. So we see uh, even written in, aver in, in work mm -hmm. jobs for, I think, some of the major issues are with housing mm -hmm. discrimination and with work. So when it comes to housing discrimination, uh, tell us a little bit about what's in the strategy and what's being no, done. No, I mean, uh, exactly. I mean, discrimination can happen in uh, everyday's life. Uh, housing is one part of it. Uh, the example that was quite well known in the recent years is the discrimination, discrimination against people who moved from the occupied right. territories. So these people had hard, hard time finding housing in other parts of the country because, uh, you know, the landlords would be unwilling and sometimes would even specifically put in their, right. in, their, in their ads that they don't want people from the occupied territory. We see that as a matter of, uh, you know, something that can be discussed. And, and we do the information campaign. We don't think that you know, prosecution necessarily is the right answer. We um, uh, rather talk about that and encourage people to uh, become more open, to know more about the, you know, the occupied territories, about you know, the reasons why people are moving from there, and showing that they are people just like us. They are in a state of necessity. They're moving you know, away from the occupied territory, but they are, you know, they're normal people, they're good people, they're, they will find a job, they will integrate, there is no reason to do that. So that's one aspect. The other is, of course, the, um, you know, the, the, the job market. That's where we had some historical imbalances. We still have this discrepancy, for example, between the uh, average um, wage that a man and a woman takes home and, uh, and, and the women normally, I mean, statistically take uh, a quarter less than a man. Mm -hmm. So that's something that is, uh -huh. um, that is uh, important and it should be dealt with. There are different strategies to that. There are different reasons why this happens. And uh, I think that, you know, we, we have a concerted um, efforts throughout the government to deal with this kind of questions because that what, you know, concerns every other citizen in the country. Absolutely. And so what, so we talk about the um, first step being educating mm -hmm. people about why not to discriminate. And what are we looking at in the enforcement side? So for example, I can speak of American history, which really took a very strong stance, passing legislation mm -hmm. to, to um, not, to prevent or, or dissuade uh, discrimination in housing and job mm -hmm. market based on Race, right. gender, right. etc. Now, interestingly enough, in Ukraine, we we don't have traditionally any sort of legislative limitations or discriminations. Not that many of them, at least. Uh, one of the last one that was changed was the ban on certain professions for women, supposedly because they're too hard or too complicated or would not let them, you know, care for their children. Well, yes, so that was Soviet area Soviet era type era of kind of a protective system, which, for example, would not let. Uh, you know, allow a woman to be a driver or a pilot mm -hmm. or to be in an active combat position in the army. Well, it was based on erroneous information about yeah. women's abilities, right. their health status. So that was the uh, probably the most prominent example of this legislative discrimination. But the most of the things, you know, most of the instances of discrimination happen not because of the legislature. You know, the laws are are equal on its face, on their face, but rather based on the cultural you know, uh, background on the traditions and uh, misunderstandings or, or erroneous concepts about, you know, age, sex or, or different abilities of people. We are, you know, taking specific care on protecting people with disabilities, uh, women, uh, people from the occupied territories, sort of the different types of and different categories of people who are vulnerable for this or that reason and making sure that, I mean, uh, the, um, you know, the, the, the workforce, the, the market is, uh, ha you know, has a specific um, protective mechanism to ensure that they can compete equally right. with, with other people. And so how is this going about? We know about the, you know, the stick in the carrot, this positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, just, you know, encouraging, educating does not... Uh, force people mm -hmm. to either meet quotas right. to hiring, but also it, if there's no, um, uh, if, if there's no consequences mm -hmm. of not following right. through. So uh, when we're talking about la labor market, there's a specific inspection, the, the service that, you know, verifies and enforces legislation. 
relating to labor force, and it enforces uh, different provisions that are, 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 are there to fight discrimination. For example, there are quota for people with disabilities. So, I mean, uh, they have a preference in, in uh, um, when, and, you know, when applying for a job. So when, whenever uh, there, is an, there is an instance that a person is uh, not taken in, into the job, you know, because of his, specific, his or her specific condition, that would be the case that would be referred to the specific service that can uh, find uh, you know the um, the company that uh, refused to do that. Now also, how, oh, just to, to interrupt mm -hmm. you, how would this be enforced? So, who can bring these things? Does this give? So the person, does this help yeah, empower sure. I mean, the, the, the person that uh, thinks that he or she is discriminated should apply and uh, let you know complain to to the service. But also, uh, they can go and uh, on a regular basis verify whether the legislation mm -hmm. is is there in place. Uh, the legislation is pr properly enforced and, and, and the guarantees that are provided for are uh, really in place. Also important role is, of, is that of trade unions, especially for, for bigger production sites. That's where we have strong trade unions, which by definition are there to protect you know, uh, the, labor for, uh, you know, the, the workforce and they negotiate the collective uh, agreements uh, with the companies. That includes specific provisions on women, women with children, older people, uh, you know, people with disabilities, etc., etc., etc. And well, and then now let's look at a little at some of the things that maybe you think need to have mm -hmm. more focus on. Mm -hmm. So this strategy, as we said, covers right. a wide breadth of things that fall under human rights. What are some things that you think haven't been? Uh, touched on enough. Right. I mean, something that is very specific, um, there, there is still uh, not, in, you know, uh, we're still working on the legislation uh, in, to put legislation in place to make uh, all the buildings accessible to people with disabilities. So that is something that is basic for people who are, uh, who are in a wheelchair or any other way are not able to use the facilities. They're not specifically accommodated. I mean, without this basic things, right, they, they're not really able to integrate, to, into, society, to, to integrate really. into society. So that's something that remains a challenge. I mean, we still have uh, very few places that are accessible for you know, for people, for example, in wheelchairs. So that remains a challenge. We, we need to change our construction regulations. I was going to ask about this, yeah. Yeah, uh, to make sure that all the new constructions are, you know, sites or, 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 or houses or, you know, public spaces are uh, accessible, but also gradually work on, you know, making it more accessible, you know, the, 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 the buildings that we have right now. So this is a massive task. I mean, that Absolutely. will require a lot of investment, but that's, of, of course, definitely the road that we're going to take. And do just we, but one example. And do we see in, in legislation, do we see this for new construction uh, or has this yet to go into act? We're, we're uh, we, we've, we've had this introduced in, 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 in the new construction norms. Uh, again, here the question is uh, enforcement, right? So, I mean, unfortunately, not always uh, this happens the way it is supposed to be. And, and it's, of course, the, the, you know, the government's responsibility to make sure that this indeed happens. I mean, what we definitely can start with is the public, you know, spaces, you know, the, the um, you know, local council uh, buildings, government buildings, which should be 100 percent accessible. Um, for example, what has been done, uh, we've, uh, you know, uh, we've translated many of the information that we give online to, uh, to uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a way that is accessible for people with, uh, see, you know, the vision impairment. Vision impairment. Or, mm -hmm. And uh, we, we are providing services to people who can, you know, I mean, can see, can read at all mm. so that they can, uh, you know, call on the phone someone to get information that they need. I mean, again, we, 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 we look in different directions. There is a lot, a lot to be done. Absolutely. But I mean, the government is committed to make sure that, you know, Ukraine is a better place to live and uh, accessible to everyone. And in the last three years since it's been implemented, mm -hmm. what, in your opinion, has been maybe one or two of the biggest achievements that you've seen? I think uh, w what has been the biggest achievement, what has become uh, a part of the everyday's agenda is the um, gender equality. So we've had a, a gender equality um, you know, agent appointed by the government who oversees uh, all of the new legislation coming coming out of the government offices to make sure that it is gender neutral 
and uh, and uh, has this you know and has this gender component to it. And I think we, we've seen, uh, as I said, the, the gender quota introduced in the parliament. Hopefully then, you know, it will become mandatory. But we also see a lot, a lot of discussion and attention going into women in politics, women in public service, women in business, uh, protecting them from uh, gender-based violence, uh, making sure that police is specifically trained to deal with the domestic violence situations. And uh, I think that's one of the areas where we uh, made a, already made a significant progress within the last three years. Well, and uh, thank you so much for, for telling us about the status, how mm -hmm. things have been going, and also what we could look forward to, what's in the, what's in the works that's going to be changed in the Lex. Now, uh, we still have, have a lot to do with respect to the occupied territories and the internally displaced persons, people who moved out of occupied territories. This is a huge challenge. I mean, uh, you can provide all the government services to the territories you do not control. But you have to make sure that you do everything possible to make sure that people have access to as many services as possible. They have uh, so that they have access to the pensions that they've earned. They can register their children, register their marriages. They can go to court or or submit information online about them that they can get a you know valid international uh, passport that they can travel internationally that they uh, can get you know the news in ukrainian and also sort of you know keep connection with the relatives or friends that are uh, the government control territory uh, we also need to you know redouble our efforts to integrate the people who moved out of the occupied territories there are more than uh, one and 1.5 million of Absolutely. them in in uh, that they moved out of occupied territories. So that's an area where a lot more needs to be done. And it's so far a lot has been done, mm -hmm. and a lot has been done with trying to change perceptions. But as you said, right. I mean, uh, the good news is that more than 80 percent of the IDPs, people who moved out of occupied territories, have already integrated in their into their new communities. I mean, they they say they found a job, they rent uh, you know housing, so they they're fine. But there remains this, you know, percentage of people who, for various reasons, cannot integrate easily or cannot find a job. So that's where the government needs to step in and help with, you know, some. Uh, there, there are certain programs that encourage the entrepreneurship and also job creation for people from the occupied territories. And also, we're still working on the housing programs, uh, either in terms of in in way of providing housing for free for a certain period of time or uh, subsidized mortgages mm -hmm. for people to be able to afford a new you know, place to live. So it's a step by step, there's improvements, mm -hmm. room for improvement, sure. and we're gonna see how things work. Thank you so much for being with us today and bringing us this uh, up-to-date information. Thank you, thank you for having me. That was Sergei Petokhov, Deputy Minister of Justice of Ukraine on European integration. Thank you for watching UATV and stay tuned for more.